Students are heading back to school across this country. The process started last week with some provinces bringing in-person learning back. More joined this week, Ontario and Quebec on track to do that. All the Atlantic provinces though, except for Nova Scotia, schools remain closed. And with the return to classes though, some parents are worried about the risk factors. Proper ventilation being at the top of that list. Jeffrey Siegel is a professor of civil engineering at the University of Toronto. Uh, professor Siegel, great to chat with you again. And I wanna start by talking about HEPA filters, a passion for you I know. Provinces like Ontario are deploying these filters into their classrooms, trying to make them safer. But how confident are you that they will actually make classrooms safer? Yeah, so absolutely, we know that they can make classrooms safer. Whether they do or not depends a lot on, you know, are they sized appropriately uh, and are they, um, are they being used well? What you've heard about what Ontario is offering, the size and type, um, are you pleased with, with the, that plan, the shape that it's taking? How, how is the best way they should be using them? Yeah, so I think that, you know, I'm definitely much more pleased than doing nothing. Uh, we could always do more. And so I think, you know, I'm not privy to all the details about how they're being sized. I think some big classrooms might need more than one. I'm not sure if there's a provision for that. Uh, and I think that the really important piece that we need more information on is the teachers and the, the staff in the school really need training on how to use them well. Quebec is taking a different approach, CO2 detectors uh, to classrooms, to so schools with elevated levels of CO2, then can a then ask for an air exchanger from the province. And Quebec is saying teachers should, you know, just open windows throughout the day. And I know you, you do advocate opening windows as part of, a, uh, of the whole picture, but what do you make of that particular approach in Quebec? Well, what Quebec is doing is saying, hey, we want to increase ventilation. That's a good thing. Uh, and I think that, you know, I, although I do like opening windows, I caution that sometimes they don't provide a lot of ventilation. So I hope we can do better. And I think the air exchangers are a great, great start. And again, it's all a question of sizing, right? So we can add ventilation air, but the question is, are we adding enough? There's, there's so many questions that parents have. So we wanted to do this segment to be able to arm parents and students as they go back to be asking the kinds of questions uh, to, to feel empowered, to ask questions of their classrooms, of their teachers, and make sure they're getting the right kind of equipment. So what, what kind of questions should a parent be asking, you know, the leadership at their children's school about their classrooms? So I think question number one is, what are you doing with regards to ventilation in the classroom? And the reason why I like that as a question is, you know, you can't necessarily, without expertise, interpret the answer, but you can definitely tell how engaged someone is. And, you know, if someone tells me, yeah, we got some HEPA filters, yeah, I think they're going in some classrooms, is a very different answer than someone is telling you that the measures that they're taking. So looking at that level of engagement from the administrator is really important. Uh, I think the second question that, that parents should ask is, you know, how are you doing it uh, and how do you know that it's working? And this does start to get into a lot of the details, but I think it gives an opportunity for the parent to evaluate, you know, how conversant is the, um, the, is the administrator with the issues. And, and you suggest that these are used, these devices are used along with masks. We just want to stress all of that. This is part of the puzzle. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, there is a layered approach. We know that. We know that's what works. And, you know, especially in classrooms that have inadequate ventilation. But in general, um, these are just one piece of the puzzle, certainly not the whole thing. If, if they ask the questions that you've just raised and are not satisfied with the answers or they don't have this kind of ventilation, these filters, would you suggest that they don't send their children back to school? Yeah, that's a really tough question and one that I think every family has to weigh. Um, I think that, you know, a classroom, a school might be doing a lot of things and this is just one piece. Uh, and so, I mean, I think parents have to take the whole experience of what they're seeing, not just this, this one piece of it. The other thing I would say is that, you know, everyone is at a different risk level. Everyone's got a different risk tolerance and those sorts of things. And so I really hope people are having that conversation, you know, with their, within their family and within their broader community. Uh, but, you know, I think everyone might come up with a different answer. You've dedicated your career to, to this kind of thing, air quality. It's now become something we're all talking about. But are you concerned 
that we're two years in and there's still classrooms that don't have these? I mean, even if there wasn't a pandemic, shouldn't they have these in place? Yeah. Absolutely. I was concerned before the pandemic. I'm sure I'll be concerned after the pandemic. But I think it's really important to be positive. And you're right. There is a spotlight on this issue now. And I sure hope that it continues because the benefits are huge. We see lower absenteeism, better cognitive outcomes, better performance on student learning tasks, things like standardized tests, higher salaries when the students graduate, all kinds of benefits that are very well demonstrated. And so the reason to do this is certainly to help us in the pandemic, kind of one piece of that puzzle, but it's also to get a whole bunch of good outcomes. This isn't a luxury, is what you're saying. So why do you think there's uh, been, you know, there's been such hesitance to, to put these in place? Well, I mean, look, uh, I know that I can talk to you all day about indoor air quality, <laughs> but if I think about the kinds of questions that people typically ask about their, their child's school, indoor air quality probably is not on the list. And I think that gets to the issue that, you know, this is a really important issue, not just in our schools, but in all our buildings, but it's not something that's top of mind. And so, you know, with all the bad that's come with the pandemic, maybe if there's a little sliver of good, maybe it's that people will start thinking about this issue and asking the questions. I can't let you go without talking about when we first met, which was for a marketplace piece I did, I think it was last year, the time frame is all a blur because of this pandemic, but we talked about DIY uh, filters. We made one, I have two in my house now that cost, I don't know, what are they, 45, $50? What is yeah, your advice cheap. on that front to folks? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, I, I hope that we're doing things right and improving the ventilation and filtration systems in all our schools, but that's expensive and kind of long term. So I hope that as a stopgap measure, we're using good, you know, portable HEPA filters. And because there's sometimes availability or other issues with those, then sure, the DIY air cleaners are great. And there's lots of information on the web on how to make them. I would comment that, you know, our, our kids are important and the cost isn't that expensive of what we're talking about. So I sure hope people aren't doing the DIY air cleaners because that's all the, the resources that are available, but they absolutely can work and they can work well. Yeah, the DIY ones would be great in your home. Our schools should should have these in place um, for, for our students is what you're saying. Professor Siegel, I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Neil. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.